And sometimes when you're going through the challenges and difficulties of life, just keep reminding yourself, I know he'll do it. I know God will fix it. I know God will work it out. He'll bring me through. Thank you so much, praise team, for blessing us this in such a wonderful fashion. I want that you would think with me on this thought, a powerful prayer of repentance. A powerful prayer of repentance. And wherever you may be at this time, whether in your homes or in other places of viewing, or even here, in the sanctuary, I would that you would repeat the thought after me, if you will, a powerful prayer, powerful prayer. Of, repentance. of repentance. God bless you. It should be noted that Psalm, the 51st number, in its entirety is a prayer of repentance. 
this psalm consists of some 19 verses, but all of it comprises a prayer that I submit to you is a powerful prayer of repentance. The Bible informs us here that this prayer was a prayer of David when he had fallen into the deep pits of sin. The burden of his sins weighed greatly upon him. He was tormented by the memory of the terrible things that he had done. Haunted both day and night, tormented both day and night, tormented in the a.m. and in the p.m. with the memories of the terrible things that David had done. And thus it was led of David to send up, to put everything on hold and to send up to the Heavenly Father a prayer of repentance. But I submit to you that it is difficult for us to truly appreciate David's prayer if we don't know the things that moved David, the things that motivated David to pray this prayer. David was moved, he was motivated to pray this special prayer to God because David wanted God to receive his prayer of repentance. David felt the need to repent. For you see, David had committed uh, some terrible sins. David, who is first revealed to us in Scripture, as the keeper of his father's sheep when he was just a young lad. David, who grows into a status of fame and great popularity when he slew the fierce giant Goliath. David, who had now become the second king of Israel. King David had done some things uh, that were terribly displeasing to God. And David knew that it was prayer time. David realized, David recognized the fact that it was time to send up to God a prayer of repentance, but it needed to be a sincere prayer. It needed to be more than just a prayer where he would go through the motions, but it needed to be a prayer that was powerful, a prayer that was sincere. It needed to be a powerful prayer of repentance. And brothers and sisters, David is moved to pray this prayer by reason and for the cause of the sins that he had committed. David, as many of you know, had committed the terrible sin of adultery. David had laid 
with another man's wife. David had committed adultery with a woman by the name of Bathsheba, the wife of one of the generals of David's army by the name of Uriah. Scripture informs us that David saw her from his rooftop. He looked into her residence and he saw her bathing. And David lusted for Bathsheba. He wanted her. And this thought of having an intimate relationship with her filled his mind so greatly until David finally sent for Bathsheba. And she came, and David laid with her. And the terrible sin of adultery was committed. Now let me remind you, David had been referred to as one after God's own heart. David had been one who walked with a close relationship with God, but now he has fallen into the terrible pits of sin, sin by way of adultery. It brings me to something that I need to share with you this morning, and that is, it's not in the notes, but I just want to throw it out, that even the closest of God's children can become weak. Even the closest, even the strongest of God's children can experience times of tremendous temptation. And if we are not careful, if we are not prayerful, we can many times fall victim to those temptations and we can find ourselves having committed terrible sins that require us to talk to God and to go to God in a prayer of repentance. David, one after God's own heart, had committed a terrible sin, the act of adultery. And Scripture tells us something else complicated the situation. Bathsheba went back home after she and David had had this sexual affair. She went back home, and David felt that everything would be all right. But those who know the story know that Bathsheba had to come back to David informing him that she was pregnant. And she was pregnant with David's child. No, the record tells us that David became very, very troubled by this news. And David pondered and David thought about what could be done so that this pregnancy would not be attributed to him. So David sent for Bathsheba's husband quickly. He sent for Uriah to come home and to 
spend some time with his wife. And by doing so, when the pregnancy was made known, neither Bathsheba's husband or anyone else would be aware of who the real father was. Scripture tells us Uriah came from the field of battle, but he did not go in to lay with his wife. Uriah said, my soldiers don't have this privilege to come home to their wives and enjoy a time of intimacy with their wives, so I don't feel good doing it either. And so he did not return to Bathsheba. And scripture tells us when David learned of it, David was weighted down with even more concerns. And thus David had Uriah put on the front line of battle to get Uriah killed in hopes that Uriah would be killed because those who usually were on the front line were the ones who usually ended up killed or severely injured. And Uriah who was put on the front line of battle as David desired, was killed. And David went on and quickly married Bathsheba, feeling that all was well, feeling that the terrible actions that he had committed would never be realized. But the Bible tells us, as Sister Maddie Mae Walker, my childhood at West End Baptist Church used to say, but the Bible says that uh, God knew all about David's sins. God knew all about the terrible things that David had done. And all oh, brothers and sisters, God knows about our sins. God knows about the mistakes that we have made. God knows when we have messed up. He knows when we have gone wrong. He knows when we have gone in a direction that is contrary to his will. Let me say it again. God knows. And the scriptures inform us that God spoke to his prophet Nathan and told Nathan, you go to the house of David. And you tell David that I know all about his behavior. Inform David that I know about the terrible things that he has done. And oh, when the prophet told David, when the prophet informed David, in his unique prophetic way of what David had done. Scripture tells us David was greatly grieved. David became tremendously sorrowful, heavy hearted. David became so saddened. Scripture tells us until David could not enjoy the fellowship that he had once had with God. In other words, 
He lost something that he used to have regarding his relationship with the Almighty God. Yes, yes. And David decided that it was time to go to God in prayer. It was time for him to repent. I want to tell you something about repentance. Yeah, a whole lot of folks are not clear on the full scope of what repentance consists of. I want to tell you something about repentance that brings me to my first point, and that is number one, true repentance involves the recognition and acknowledgement of our sins. It also involves a deep sorrow for our sins. It also involves a turning to God, seeking his mercy and forgiveness, but it also involves a turning away from our sinful behavior. Yes, yes, so important, so significant, so relevant, even in this modern day and time when so many folk take sinful activity so lightly. I want to read it again. True repentance involves the recognition and acknowledgement of our sins. It also involves a deep sorrow for our sins. It also involves a turning to God, seeking his forgiveness, seeking his mercy. But it also involves a turning away from our sinful behavior. Let me say this. Something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with me. When I can do wrong and engage in all kinds of sinful conduct and behavior, and it does not grieve my spirit. It does not trouble my heart. If you are a true child of God, when you fall into the pits of sin, your heart should become greatly sorrowful. Yeah, in other words, what I'm trying to tell you, you should not be able to sin when you are a child of God and go on foot loose and fancy free as though nothing has happened. Now, I know uh, that uh, uh, preaching a sermon like this <laughs> does not suit everybody's fancy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the truth must be told. And oh, God has charged me with the assignment to come here and talk about sin and the need for repentance. Pray with me if you will. You'll find evidence of this that I've just shared with you in Psalm, the 51st number, verses 1, 2, and 3, where David, in this prayer of repentance, says, in verse 1, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Yes, yes, David cries out in this powerful prayer of repentance for the Lord to grant him mercy, for the Lord to be forgiving for the terrible things that he had done. And oh, Scripture says here 
David says in verse 3, for I acknowledge my transgressions. I'm not going to hide it and act like I haven't done wrong. I acknowledge my transgressions. And he says, and my sin is ever before me. Yeah. And of course, the Bible says, the Bible says that David began this prayer that starts in Psalm 51, verse 1, and goes all the way through to the closing verse of verse 19. All of this 51st number of Psalms should be read. All of it should be taken into account. Read it all when you get a chance because there's so much in it that David asked God for that I won't be able to put in this message, but I want you to know that it all constitutes a powerful prayer of repentance. But there's something else that David came to realize and that each of us should come to realize, which brings me to my second point, and that is number two. Sin separates us from God. Sin separates us from God and makes restoration necessary. Let me say that again. Sin separates us from God and makes restoration necessary. Yeah. Yes. David came to realize that his terrible sinful actions had brought about separation between him and God. David no longer felt the blessings of fellowship with God. You know, so many blessings come from us being in fellowship with God. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to be a millionaire. But oh, I enjoy the abundance of blessings when I'm in true fellowship with God. Listen, you have something that the billionaires in some cases don't have. You have a peace that surpasses all understanding. You have joy that the world can't give you and the world can't take away. Fellowship with God. David realized that he had experienced separation from God. He had experienced a breach in the fellowship that he once had and enjoyed with God. And this greatly troubled David. It greatly burdened David. It greatly distressed David. And David adds on in this prayer this powerful prayer of repentance, David says something that brings me, oh, brothers and sisters, to the reading of verses 11 and 12. David said in this prayer, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Yes, but he goes on to say in verse 11 or verse 12, he says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Yes, restoration is necessary when sin separates us from God. We need to be restored. 
we need to be restored. And one of the things that God has assigned me to do is to tell you that restoration is possible. That no matter how badly we messed up, no badly how wrong we've gone, no badly how deep in sin we may have fallen, restoration is possible. When we truly repent of our sins. Yes. Now, don't repent and don't go to God in a prayer of repentance when you know that you're going to repeat those same actions all over again. Yeah, don't take God as a plaything. No. When you go to God in prayer, praying for his forgiveness, praying for his mercy, praying for his restoration, be sincere, be serious about it, and be sincere about turning away from that sin that messed you up in the first place. Yes, sin separates us from God and makes restoration necessary. David had realized the separation between him and God as a result of his sins, and David realized that he needed restoration. David realized that he needed his joy back. Yeah, he needed his joy back. Listen, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And whenever you've experienced the joy of the Lord, you become addicted to it. And God knows you miss it when it's gone. David says, in essence, I want back the stuff that I lost. Sin caused me to lose my joy. Sin caused me to lose my fellowship with you, Heavenly Father. Oh, and Lord, I don't want you to cast me away. I know I've done wrong. But I'm asking, I'm requesting, I'm pleading that you will not cast me away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Though he prayed this powerful, powerful prayer. But oh, it brings me to my last point. And that is... Number three, when we have received God's forgiveness and restoration, we should let others who have fallen into sinful behavior know that God's forgiveness and restoration can be received. In other words, when God has granted you pardon, when God has granted you Mercy, when God has granted you forgiveness, then you ought to tell other folk who have messed up, other folk who have fallen away from God, you should tell them, yes, I know that you can be restored. I know uh, that you can receive pardon for the sins you have committed. And David could tell him, the reason why I know is because I messed up and God granted me forgiveness. Now, let me say this. I know we've got some folk who are so-called super saints. I know we've got some folk who are so-called holier than thou. But, oh, if the truth be told, you messed up too. If the truth be told, the scripture is true. All 
have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us have made some mistakes. All of us, even including, including the one who's preaching this sermon, all of us have fallen short. But oh, when you have received God's forgiveness, you have a personal testimony that you need to share with others. Yes, you need to tell them that even though you messed up, even though you've gone wrong, God is a loving God. Even though you made some mistakes. God is a forgiving God. And God will give you, yes, forgiveness. If you come to him like David did. For when you read down a little further, David says in this same portion of scripture David says something that is worthy of being mentioned David says in verse 10 yes of Psalm 51 David said create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me and oh I'm here to tell you this morning yes that God will create in us a clean heart and God will restore in us uh, the right spirit and all oh, when you've been restored teach others when you've been uh, yes forgiven teach others about the goodness of the Lord teach others yes that the Lord will give us mercy yes the Lord will bless us yes with forgiveness and I'm so glad to be a witness that he has forgiven me for the times I went wrong for the times I made mistakes for the Bible says all have sin and come short of the glory of God and if you're not ashamed to be in the I have sin category will you just wave your hand will you just wave your hand yes and let others know yes I messed up I went wrong sometime but I went back to God in sincere prayer. I repented for my sins. I turned away from my sins and God granted me his forgiveness for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord is merciful and his mercy endureth forever excuse me now excuse me right through here but when i think about uh, the mercy of god when i think about uh, his goodness to me and how he has uh, blessed me uh, in spite of my wrong and given me another chance my heart is moved with joy my heart is filled with thanksgiving and oh i don't know where you are i don't know who you are but if you're not ashamed if you're not ashamed will you just give god some praise for the times he has forgiven you for the times that he's blessed you 
with another chance for the time that he has created in you a clean heart for the time that he's renewed in you a right spirit help me praise it help me tell him thank you lord help me tell him thank you lord Restoration is possible. Receiving God's forgiveness is possible. But you and I, just like David, must recognize and acknowledge our sins. You and I, just like David, must become deeply sorrowful for the wrong we've done. You and I, just like David, must turn to the Almighty God, requesting, praying, pleading for his mercy and his forgiveness. You and I, just like David, must turn away from our sinful conduct, turn away from that activity that brought us into the depths of sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is waiting on you right now. He's waiting on you. Listen. He kept the door open so that you can come back to him. Scripture says, return unto the Lord and he will return unto you. We just ask that wherever you are, we just ask that you, if you haven't done so already, would come to God. Call out to him in prayer. He will hear and respond to your prayer. Father God, thank you now for this opportunity to share your word with your people. Let it be a source of encouragement. Let it be a source of strength. Let it be a source a word that will cause your people to be edified. Let it be a word that will result in you being glorified. For this prayer we lift up to you in Jesus' name. And we say thank you. And amen, amen, amen. Come on, praise team.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 